I grew up confused about my culture and identity and felt out of place most of the time until I found comedy, which forced me to be honest with myself and I realized mostly I'm just an expat brat. Welcome to my show. I'm Salman Qureshi. Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, welcome back to another beautiful episode of Expat Brat Podcast. Audio only where you get to enjoy just listening to something instead of having to watch it and and play a video and use a precious data although data is cheap these days um this is a much lesser data sensory overload kind of thing right because sometimes we need it we need to just listen to good audio and that is the excuse i'm going to stick to about not going on to a video platform for now because everybody keeps asking about it and i I got to have a good excuse. And I think what I said was a good excuse. And besides, there are more important things in life going on. Like this P. Diddy stuff. <laughs> Did you see it coming? Of course, we all saw it coming. I think at this point, if a celebrity doesn't have something going on, that's what's more shocking, right? It's uh, it's horrible. If you haven't, if you haven't caught on to it yet because you're not hip and you're like me and you wouldn't have known about this except you accidentally... Uh, opened some social media platform and went onto the right video because you you tend to follow um, and stay connected with your nephews and nieces through these apps and because they their um, <clears throat> their what do you call it with the social media algorithm uh, pushed this onto you by association. If you're like me, well then what happened <laughs> is that the dude has been accused of. Um, <sighs> I don't even know how to describe it. Like, what's the actual crime? It's like forceful. What is it? Like forceful. Um, uh, <laughs> what's he charged with? Like, let me let me spell that out. For you. Okay, yeah. Here he's he faces several charges, including sex trafficking, drug possession, and firearms offenses. Half of which in America is like, isn't that just legal at this point? And I, when I say half of it, I, I will the three things I mentioned, two thirds of it, or maybe all, which two thirds I, I'm not sure exactly when I read these things again and again. So that that's basically it, man. He's been busted. Uh, some of the stories coming out are crazy. They're really, you know, it's it makes you kind of feel a little sick in the stomach that this stuff was going on, and at the same time, I just kind of go like again, you know, this much. Um, this much uh, is like standard now with celebrities and stuff. Like at this point, if the goodest of the goodest celebs, and, I, and we all know I'm talking about Keanu Reeves, if, if it came out that he's running some dungeon under his basement where he takes kids from impoverished countries and and plays, makes them, forces them to act and do reenactments of the matrix, then I, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't think I'd be surprised anymore. I think, I think it's so crazy. And it's, and it's because the more these things come into light, you, you just kind of look and you go, but this is history. This is, this is not about a celebrity. This is basically when too much money and power is concentrated in too few individuals, human beings in general, we're not made for this stuff. And that's why I think, God has kept me away from superstardom. <laughs> um, it's he's kept me away because uh, he he wants me to remain a good person, which is still up for debate anyway. But but I maybe I'd be a far worse person if I if I suddenly obtained power and riches. And let's not lie, you know, it, it does go to one's head, like. I'm not justifying these actions, but these, you know, it's just like, I'll, I'll tell you a story, right? Um, it was the closest I've seen experience Beatlemania myself, right? <laughs> what happened was uh, I was performing, uh, this is about 10 years ago or something. I was performing with a lineup that included the, the headliner. This dude was like big in some circles and in, in, with a particular target market, yeah? target audience and uh and we went to this university to perform and i was on the lineup and and we do the show i didn't know how big he was how crazy they were about him and how crazy in general people can be about what they perceive as someone as being famous 
and 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 as so, soon as our sets and as the show ended, he he closed off. We had about five hundred people in that room who were which filled up the theater we were in. Maybe there were a bit more, five hundred, six hundred, something like that. Uh, they they the crowd chased us back to the green room. And when I say the green room, it was like this elaborate ballroom area that was our green room at that point. And the security initially tried to close off the audience and they closed the ballroom door, uh, not letting these people in. But there were so many that eventually, you know, and they were harmless students, I suppose, university students. So they opened the door, which says something about the security. Now that I look back at it and, uh, and they let the mob in and they mobbed us. They mobbed us for pictures and, 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 you know, just wanted to shake hands and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and they didn't, I didn't, they didn't know me. They just seen me perform for 15, 20 minutes. But I think by association, because of that other big comic, they, we were all famous. And, and, and I had, so, you know, the whole chase and then the whole mobbing and, and just taking so much time to just get out, uh, right up to our cars, right up to our cars in the parking lot. We had people chasing us for one more picture and stuff. And that was crazy. My, I think if I had stayed like that, if I had that experience four or five times in a row, I would have been spoiled as hell. Luckily for me, as soon as I drove out of that parking lot, no one, two, three people like cut me off on the road. And I was like, yep, I'm, uh, I'm just normal Sal again. <laughs> That's crazy. I've also experienced these kind of things when my dad was alive. I, I, I went with him on some of his meetings and they were, they were like these huge government things. And he took me along for some internship and blah, blah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the only time my dad did anything that was, um, that, that would be perceived as kind of like, what's the, not, not based on merit. He was such a big believer in merit. I was shocked when he took me along. And, it, and I found out later it was more his boss who was encouraging him to take me rather than my dad forcing it down anyone's throat. So respect to the man, but I got lucky and I got to go on a couple of trips and those trips, you know, it's they, they, they get like police entourage uh, all the way, everywhere they go, the the hotel, everything is like, you know, super taken care of. And having experienced these things, I just go, I just, I, I, honestly, I can tell you, it spoils you. You hate, I, I always, you know, my, my feet are on the ground because I always come back and my friends and family treat me like crap again. <laughs> and I don't have these protocols that, for me. Um, so it, it returns to normal pretty quickly. But I think a sustained environment of that, I'm not surprised, man. These people go crazy. Like this guy, P. Diddy, one of the things he was doing was, what was it called? Like a feud off or a... Um, I got to tell you this word because it was it was it was really bizarre. It he did these things where he got people doing acts uh, with each other for hours sometimes, and they needed IV after it. Freak offs. That's it. Free freak offs. He got them to do freak offs, and you. I don't. I don't think I even need to explain what that term effectively means. Um, eventually, someone complained after like. 40 years or something, 20 years. I don't know how long this stuff has been going on. He's been famous since what, 95, 98? Um, <clears throat> there you go. Uh, so yeah, like, you know, it's just, a, and, and, and I guess it stayed hidden so long, like all the other stuff, because celebrities just have that kind of power dynamics. It's crazy. I never understood it till I watched that show on Apple. Um, what's that show called? The one with the reporters, Jennifer Aniston, uh, whatever it is look look at my memory it's always shot if you listen to enough of my episodes half the time i sound like a guy with, with alzheimer's and an aging old dude going what's that thing called <laughs> anyway um i should really get this checked now that i if i remember to i will um wow that's okay anywho um that that show has this scene in season one where this um steve carell's character who's like this rich famous dude he takes someone to back to his hotel room. They'd been kind of laughing together. Had been hanging out. A new girl working at at the newsroom, and she uh, she freezes when he makes a move, and he takes it for consent, and and they they sleep together, and she doesn't retaliate. But to her, it was this frozen thing. That scene really was so powerful for me because it really made it so clear what the problem was. Um, with these dynamics and and I and I you know in other instances I've frozen up in front of 
people in power. It, it happens to all of us. Um, luckily, my situation wasn't so horrible. <laughs> And, um, and, and, you know, but it, it still leaves you with that feeling. So God, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta, this wealth, fame, this influence celebrities have is just, it's crazy. And what do you do? You know, even the legal system kind of with juries and stuff, they're human beings. They'll look at someone, they'll be influenced by, uh, by all this. And maybe that's why they, they, there's no justice for this stuff. And, uh, but it also, I can't believe all this went on for so long without people not knowing right like it has to be <laughs> so many people. he was doing parties there's no way some people didn't know and the amount of like like the culture of silence in the entertainment industry it's why these um it's it's but i you know i don't want to say that because then these conservatives la latch on and they go oh you know hollywood's corrupt when in fact the, the you get enough stories coming out of like other places like the church and stuff as well so it's not so much of uh, the, the culture of silence just in the entertainment industry. It's surprising how much there's a culture of silence around anything bad happening. It's uh, It just goes on and on, and, and calling it out can be so tricky, so hard. Uh, I think I've been in situations where maybe I didn't call out something, nothing this horrendous, don't worry. I haven't been invited to freak-offs or anything. The most biggest freak-off I might have had was on over burgers or some shit like that um but yeah but but definitely situations or stuff where you go at that point you look back i was younger i was naive or just not confident enough and you kind of go maybe maybe i should have said something uh about those situations even if they're small right because that that culture of silence then builds up and people uh, who get away with a few things might feel they can get away with a lot more um i'm not preaching here i'm just saying the proof is in the pudding because if you don't, P. Diddy going to come for you, right? And and it's crazy like that. Like it's just, it's this privilege that I'd love to have for myself. <laughs> the dude offered, just so you know, his team, his legal team offered $50 million in bail, right? That's that's how much money this dude had. I don't think anyone should have more than $50 million uh, at all. After they reach that amount or so, they should just like, they've won, they've won monopoly or something and, and and that's it like they shouldn't be allowed to make any more money beyond that this dude offered bail for that much all right uh the judges didn't let him through i think he, they tried twice or something so there's there's that um i think in a lot of countries a lot of courts uh people could put up that kind of money and get away with anything then but um surprisingly he's been uh he's he's going to be spending time in jail waiting for his trial so that's kind of crazy and then I, I, the, the other thing that gets me though you know the sex trafficking bit i get the guns and the drugs the sex i'm like i'm sure at that level of fame there are women throwing themselves at you how perverted or corrupt in your mind do you have to be to turn that into more and more i guess that that is the problem with human beings though right like we get something we want more we want more and then <laughs> pretty soon you're running these kind of shitty things and and eventually it comes crashing down. If you live long enough, there are people who died before they should have been caught. Uh, they should have been caught, but they didn't. Um, but I, I don't know, man. Their entourage just like hanging around watching this thing. It's this whole concept of group thing, loyalty. You know, these individuals within these circles is just like no one's speaking out. No one's asking questions about the eth ethical responsibilities. You know, uh, you're witnessing this, you're enabling abuse behavior, then it's just crazy. Um, but there was something else about it, too. It was these videos. He was, he, he apparently, and again, I know it has to be proven or something, but, it, but the accusation is that he, he had like explicit videos of some of the victims to blackmail them, right? And that whole thing of weaponization of digital footage and private media, like that stuff just, it's crazy. It gets to me. It's scary how much, um, what else is happening, who has not spoken up. And finally, for that one person to speak up and, and bring this house of cards down, uh, the amount of courage it must have taken, the amount of pain they must have had to go through to go, no, I'm making this call and doing it. Um, it's crazy. This whole digital world is just, oh man, like it's just nuts. And then, I don't want to, uh, yeah, but the, the, 
the, the, the, this one's a bit funny too because his freak offs. It wasn't just about women. He was there was a little bit of like male victimization as well because you know they they were like these male um uh sex workers strip whatever they were it doesn't matter they were forced to carry on and on and it was a drug fueled thing so you kind of listen to that and you go there's a stigma around male survivors as well this this is hard eventually a woman spoke up uh and and man you know this all of this is so not like there's so many angles to this story that I just kind of it's it's hard just the whole celebrity apology industry as well you know um, the I can't wait for P Diddy to come out on Oprah or something and and issue statements of remorse to to manage these scandals and the whole PR team that get behind it and pretty soon there'll be a bunch of people that will start supporting him and his fans who don't want to believe the obvious evidence out there you know they'll perform this whole thing uh and 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 there's too many businesses riding on it right there's reputation business interests of not just p diddy but the people around him to make money off him they're gonna try protecting this stuff why not right so they're let's see how this one plays out i just want to see how this plays out and because you know these scandals the break in this digital era you don't know how long they're going to take um there's p diddy's high high profile case um, and then tomorrow there'll be something else people want to enforce justice for. Um, there's a new sensationalism we want to go after. Uh, and there are no meaningful consequences. You know, you just have to kind of survive it long enough to, to get out of public memory and, you know, uh, the public eye. And then, and then it's cool. You can go back to doing what you want, you know. So that's, it's, just, I just, I, I. I don't know what else to say about this. It's just so weird and bizarre. It's a whole different world. It's this money and power and stuff and all these things that are going on. You know, I, I have a hard time because huh, some of these guys I grew up on and I don't want my heroes to. He wasn't a hero. Perk. <laughs> all right. I just want to clarify this. P. Diddy was no hero to me. In fact, if anything, I hated his version. Let me come out and say this now. Maybe people will be more open to me uh, to accepting this. I hated his version of uh the the sting song uh sorry please yeah whose song was it but originally um uh i'll be missing you uh it, it's uh it, it was who uh, p diddy just i hated that version and it would be on all the time it would be playing all the time on mtv and and channel v and whatever i had at that time in my life what is this around 98 or something i don't know but it was i i never liked it there, it feels so good to be able to say this out loud. I never liked it. I loved the original uh, by Sting, and uh, and 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 just hated that he ruined it. Um, but now, hopefully, we can get we can all collectively put it behind us. You know, although Sting might be stung by this, haha, because there was one time I read like he was paid an insane. It was five thousand dollars a day or some shit like that. It, it, you know, go fact check this if you want. But it was something like that that I read a day for for the for royalties. You know, because he sampled that song in it. Um, maybe that was a while ago or when it was popular. I don't know how far back this news was, but that's a lot of money coming to Sting that might dry up too. And now I'm in two minds. I like Sting. Uh, if P Diddy was driving money towards Sting. Um, Oh God! So many. See, this is the problem. There's so many moral dilemmas about these horrible situations, and the fact that I have to get over them. Uh, all right. So, 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 girls, boys, you know, and and whatever you identify with. Um, I don't say this mockingly, by the way. Uh, that's another topic we'll we'll get get into someday. Hopefully, when I have better knowledge of it myself i don't like mocking new things um i've got enough things going on in my life as well like this whole uh this 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 whole celebrity thing um is so interesting to me every time though um i've been around some some people are seemingly very nice shit <laughs> i don't know what they're what they i've been with some celebrities in hotel rooms and uh, i should clarify it was it was like with a group of people and nothing happened. And I never got to witness any of these crazy parties. So that's a shame. 
no, I wouldn't want to be in one of those where bad things were happening. But a fun story with some crazy stuff would have been nice. Um, still, still possible, I guess. Uh, yeah. Why am I even talking about this? I have bigger problems. I have electronics in my life just falling apart right now. You know, uh, it's been a my Mac. I've had my Mac for like ten years, and it's finally they're like you ever have a laptop, computer, any kind of electronic, and start showing you signs it's about to die. Right? <laughs> it's taking a little longer to start up. It's taking a little longer to load things, um, and you just want to ignore it because you're like, oh man, it's gonna be a big expense. I'm gonna have to spend more money. Uh, I don't even know if I want this. You know, the problem with having a nice Mac laptop, for example, is that I go, I don't use it enough to justify buying a Mac again. Uh, one of the reasons I got the Mac, I'm not, I'm not an artist. My, my wife is, but I'm not, I mean, I, I'm not into, I, I'm not an illustrator or, or artist that way. The I got it because I love Final Cut Pro and I wanted to edit um, videos on this. But every kid I know is like moving on to CapCut, and even if they're doing it on the laptop, they don't need these apps anymore. Uh, you can do CapCut on the desktop as well. And I just kind of go, do you need a Mac to edit social media content? That's the part where I'm, you know, I'm just like, is it worth buying such an expensive but great machine? Hey, listen, I'm not a, I, I'm not in the Apple cult, but I, I got to like, once you go Mac, there's no turning back. It's uh, it is a great machine. It it like I said, it's lasted. I think it's been like eight years or ten years. This thing has lasted, maybe less. Hang on, four, five, six, seven, at least seven years now, at least that I can remember. Maybe eight or nine. I'm not sure, but that's that's good. The last laptop I bought before this lasted me three years, but by the end of it, it was like <laughs> it was on life support. You know, in three four years max, they died out so quickly. So so. I don't know if this, tell me what you guys think about it, man. I've also, uh, my wife will have found this out by then, but I've got a fridge being delivered because our fridge also went kaput. Um, and it's been one of her lifelong dreams to get like uh, an ice crusher thing, uh, not just ice, you know, with the fridge that dispense ice, uh, but also like crushed ice. And man, it took me ages to find one that uh, that does it. Because some of them would only do water, and then some of them are too big for the space we have for our fridge, and then some of them would only do ice blocks. But I know she had mentioned crushed ice, so I finally found one in my budget and space, and, and I got it, and it's being delivered today. Uh, I, she doesn't know it yet. She thinks it's a normal fridge, um, but I'm going to surprise her with this and uh, and earn some brownie points, hopefully. Um, she's been very supportive of me this year, so you know I'm very, very lucky to have her. Uh, this is my way of paying back <laughs> with a fridge. Oh my God. It sounds, makes me sound like a 1940s husband. <laughs> it also makes me feel so old that I'm excited about a fridge. Oh God, this is horrible. What a, what a thing to end on. Thank you guys. Thank you for making me talk about that instead. I'll let you know. Keep listening to my exciting podcast where I, in my next episode, I'll tell you about how that whole fridge thing went down. Okay. (laughs) All right. Looking forward to that. Take care. Uh, Have a good one, people. Till next time. Thanks for joining us on another adventure with the Expat Brat, proudly brought to you by Capra Productions. If you enjoyed the show, please help us keep the mic running by clicking the link in the description and dropping as little as $3 to support us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our latest episodes.